Okay, we're back to it. Uh, from here, I was just adding the green one, three or more tails. Well, if there are three tails, I had an answer that there were four things that could happen. Three or more tails just adds in this one other thing. That. Now notice it says or. Or means you add. So basically you add the other answer to this. Yeah, just add one more 0.0625 to it. Okay, so you'd add up all the black stars plus the green star. And now, this one, I want you to do on your own, on your paper, and actually get the decimal answer for it. Okay, try this one. Given, that changes the what, by the way. Denominator is not a one anymore. Given that the first and third flip were tails, then what's the probability that it was tails, 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 tails? You can't just say, oh, tails, 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 tails is over here and it's 0.0625. You have to factor in your given. All right? Figure that out right now. I'm going to pause while you do it. All right, the find all the ones she's telling me that have tails in the first and third spot. All right, I'm going to erase the little stars I have now because they're from the last problem. And first and third spot, tails. Let's see, first and third spot, tails. Tails has to be from here on down because they all start with tails first. And then first and third spot, there's one. There's one. Uh, there's one. And there's one. Do you have four just like me? Okay. So that those four go where? In the denominator. Okay. So four times 0.0625. All right. And then what goes on top? Yeah. Excellent. So the tails, tails, tails goes on top, and that's right here. And there's only one of those, so it's 0.0625. Does anybody notice that a little canceling I could do here? What's on the top and what's on the bottom? 0 0.0625 cancels. Really, when you're canceling something, you're making it into a 1 over a 1. You're just reducing it. So that's a 1, really. And this is 4 times 1 on the bottom. So it's really 1 fourth, so it's 0.25. Raise your hand if you had 0.25 for your answer. Good. That's a good sign. All right. Now... I don't know if any of you were bothered by this, but there is a lot easier way to do this problem. Do you remember when we were doing these and I said, if you're ever making a really big tree, then it'd be smarter to do something else instead. Yes. Binomial is correct. So... When we said exactly three tails out of four flips, then here's how you set up the binomial for it. Do this on your scratch paper because it'll help you remember it. You have a C and then you have two parentheses. Does this ring a bell? And these are way easier. There's a bunch of these in the final too, by the way. So make sure you know binomial. It's way easier than making a chart. Okay, if I'm going to have four here, that's the total number of uh, events. And then this is how many I want to be, uh, what I'm focusing on. I'm focusing on tails this time. So this is tails. This will be heads. Probability of tails and heads are 0.5 and 0.5. These, of course, always have to add up to 100%. And then whatever number is down here also goes here. <coughs> Excuse me. And then... I need one of these because if I'm getting three tails, I must be getting one heads, right? Does that make sense? Remember setting those up? And then you can just put them all into the calculator and it'll give you your answer. Now, I've showed you how to do these things by hand before. You could do it by hand. You really could. Um, but four choose three would be four factorial over one factorial, three factorial. So the, it's going to cancel down to just four. And then this is going to be uh, one half times one half times one half, which is one eighth. And then this is going to be one half, 
one half times one eighth is one sixteenth times four, so it's four sixteenths, which would be 0.25. That's the same thing we got last time, but we didn't have to draw a mammoth chart to do it. Okay. All right. I want you to try one more. Set up the binomial for this. Let's say Sam is a 75% free throw shooter. And he's got these four clutch free throws at the end of the game. He gets fouled a couple times. What's the probability, if he's a 75% free throw shooter, what's the probability he will make four out of four? Well, you got make, you got miss. You got to see in front. He's got four shots. We want him to make four out of four. Set it up. Okay, four shots, and he's going to make four. Then make percent. We said he was a 75% free throw shooter. He's got to make four of them. Miss them, 25%, but he isn't going to miss any. So there's our problem. Did you raise your hand if you set it up right. Okay, good. And I bet you can do this part in your head. Think about it. If you have four things and you're going to choose all four of them, how many ways is there to do that? If the order doesn't matter, one. And then this 0.75 to the fourth means three-fourths times three-fourths times three-fourths times three-fourths. And this, anything to the zero power, what's that? One. So it's just times one at the end, so it's really just that. So three times three is nine times three is 27 times three, uh, 81 over four times four is 16 times four is 64 times four. Or, yeah, it starts to get to be too big a number. Did you get the decimal for me? Point what? Three one six. Raise your hand if you had point three one six. All right, good. Okay, so that is binomial. Very powerful. Can be used in lots of problems, but not in number ten. Number ten is a new kind of problem. You know what? Wait a minute. I think I just skipped a slide. I'm going to go back a second. Ah, there's this one. It's a pretty short slide, but um, you roll a die. What's the probability that you roll an even number and a three? At first, I thought they wrote this problem wrong, but then I realized, oh, they're just trying to get at a point here. When you roll a die, can you get an even number and a three? No, because those two things are, and that's covered in this question, being three and being an even number are what mutually exclusive all right that's what they are they're mutually exclusive you can't be both it's like you can't be a good person and a bad person although in my, in my opinion you actually can be because you can have good sides to you and bad sides so in the real world it's really hard to get this but in math you can be mutually exclusive anytime things overlap that's like a venn diagram we talked about that yesterday if they overlap they are not mutually exclusive in other words, they do overlap. They aren't mutually exclusive. If they were mutually exclusive, the picture would look like this. It wouldn't be a Venn diagram. They wouldn't even touch. All right. Next thing, number nine, can be solved with a binomial. In the interest of time, I'm just going to ask one person to set this up. Mr. G. In the back corner. Me? Yes, you. Okay. Got five, and I want three to be boys. Okay. Good. Perfect. Why'd you get that two? Yeah, these two together have to make five. Very good. And these two have to be the same as each other. Perfect. Nice work. On to the next one. This is the one I was trying to get at, that batting order question. This brings up another method we haven't talked about yet. We have not done... We've done trees, we've done binomial, we've done uh, the C's and the P's. This is none of the above. This is something else. Do you remember it? Do you remember? Uh, eight, things like 8 times 7 times 6 actually are, uh, that's, that sounds like a um, factorial thing, which sounds like a permutation or combination. It's a little bit different. But you're right. Places, that's the way I'd say it. Places or blanks or spaces. And I think that's what you meant. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine people in this batting order. 
Now this method is important because, okay, ending here.